Hello everyone, this is Jebro and welcome to another build video, but this time it's different people. Revenant time and I got to play Revenant over on the preview f event for the uh, EU over in Brighton and all, tons of people were there, it was very awesome, but I'm going to just talk about the build. And this is the build they kind of supplied us with, but I did change it up a bit by putting, of course, the um, ace mace main hand and also the axe on the off hand. So the first thing we're going to talk about here today is actually going to be the heal. So as you can see there, the heal is called Soothing Stone. So you heal yourself and you remove conditions. You actually gain retaliation for each condition removed. The healing base is like 5.3k and the retaliation is for about 2 seconds. The, condition removed, the conditions removed are going to be um, a number of 3. So that's pretty simple. On to the next one. Inspiring reinforcement is up next. It is a stability road, I'm going to call it. And the uh, duration is going to be six seconds. Also inflicts weakness to yourself, but it will, of course, cover five targets. And the uh, it's actually pretty nice because it's like a 600 range as well. Just puts a road in front of you. And you can get stability, it's great for downing, put lanting across the point as well, and of course you can recast it afterwards. If you blast it, you can get still that swiftness, as you do of course have that lightning field. So on to the next one, that's going to be forced engagement, and so you launch a chain at your target, and when the chain connects with a foe, it slows and taunts them. So this is the uh, new taunt skill, 3 second taunt with a 3 second slow, the opposite new 2 quickness, of course, it will slow your abilities down, and it will slow you down. And uh, there is an initial engage damage of 184, and also the range is 1200, so you force your opponent to actually attack you, and in PvP also locking some skills out, which is pretty sweet. So the next ability will be called Vengeful Hammers, and this is two, two hammers that rotate around you, and you actually do some damage from each hammer. And also, this is a toggle, so a new thing in uh, Guild Wars 2 with this class is going to be a toggle where you can toggle it on and off, so you add to actually release the hammers, you have to click it again, so you don't actually uh, lose all your energy, which is just next to the two legend icons on the left hand side above the weapon skills there. So you've got to make sure you toggle that on and off, to actually make sure you are using it effectively with your energy bar, of course. So, as we are in the legendary dwarf stance, of course, we will have the elite, which is going to be the right of the great dwarf. So, you channel the power of the right of the great dwarf to turn yourself and nearby allies into stone to reduce incoming damage. So, that is five targets, of course. Uh, it does break stun, and the radius is 600. Um, it's five seconds long, so you gain damage reduction, you are still susceptible to conditions and control effects. Also, when activated, the Revenant will turn himself and party members to stone, and also, you so you t look like you're turning to stone. It's awesome. It's such a cool look as well. I mean, uh, I just love this. I love this elite it's fun to use and you know it's going to be very useful in high damage situations maybe good for resing in spvp and also in world v world you know traveling around in the zerg and you've got some revenants in there who can reduce that damage of course so on to the uh, next skill which is actually going to be over onto the uh onto the axe next skill will be temporal rift which is the fifth skill on the axe, obviously the second skill on the axe if it's on the offhand, um, but basically this ability slices into the mist, creating an unstable rift, and after a short duration this rift will collapse in on itself and we will pull in enemies. So maximum amount, of course, is normal five, and also pulls them in, so it's a great way to just gather up your foes, put them into the same area or line, and actually combos up with the next skill quite well as well. So it also inflicts that torment, which is quite nice for five seconds. And uh, yeah, it's got a nice range as well, 900. So I really like this ability, and I'll show you the combo of it at some point in this video. It looks so good, and also the damage is pretty epic. The next ability is going to be 
the axe number four, and that is the first skill on the axe offhand, and it's going to be called Frigid Blitz. Now, this is a great ability. It hurls your axe towards the target, and damaging and chilling the foes, the axe passes through. When the axe reaches the target, you shadow step to it and deliver a large blow. So this is a great combination with the fifth skill. You pull all your foes into the same line, and if you've got the last guy targeted, you can actually pull all the way through those guys and do a massive hit towards the end. Now, number of targets is going to be free. It's unblockable and also uh, the damage is quite nice. Pass through damage is quite low, but the final damage on the end is like 813. And also, you do chill for two seconds, so it's nice to actually combo that up with the pull. And, and you'll see as well, it's a nice combo with that second ability over on the mace, which you will see fairly soon. Really nice combo abilities through this skills, uh, skill weapon set with the mace and the offhand axe. Loving it, and you're going to see that in action fairly soon, guys. Okay, so next up we're going towards the mace and we're going to go over the echoing eruption. So you leap at your foe and deliver a massive attack that cascades outwards. Each attack area is a blast finisher. So with this, the player jumps into the air, they slam into the ground and create a shockwave that cascades out from the landing point. And that's a blast finisher uh, into waves with each wave doing damage. So... It's, it's pretty nice. I mean, I use this in conjunction with the different fields that are available. Mainly, uh, one good combo is obviously the second ability, which is a fire field, to gain might, of course, and the extra damage. And then, of course, the seventh skill, which you can see on my toolbar, which if you blast that road, you can get some swiftness as well. So it's a good combo blast finisher, and it's a good way to build up might on the fire field as well, which is on the mace number two, which we will go to now. Searing Fisher is going to be the next mace number two ability. So smash your mace into the ground, causing flame s flames to erupt from the mists. Uh, this is an AOE, AOE move. So and again, it cascades in front of you, much like the um, other abilities on the... There's one on the hammer, and there's also the seventh ability on the utility bar, which you can see. Uh, number seven, sorry, which is the first utility. Kind of the very similar areas that these abilities cover, actually, to be fair. And the uh, number of tar targets, of course, is five. Burning is one second tick every time you're in that, um, in that AoE, of course. And uh, there's four pulse pulses, so it's going to be quite good. So you slam down, creating a pulsing area of burning fire. Essentially, it's like an actual crack in the earth that burns a ton of enemies in front of you and leaves a burning condition on them as well. So, the fire field, of course, is great for that blast that I talked about earlier. Um, and it's a great combination for that. And you can t combo it up with the rest of the skills. I'll show you a combo later, but basically, if you pop that down... pop Sorry, pop down the fifth skill on the axe which is going to bring everyone in. You pop down that fire field, you blast it with number three, and also you use that fourth skill to just jump right in with that shadow step and just cause even more damage. The combo is really immense and does some nice combination damage. I'll show you that later, but we're going to go on to the mace number one next. Next up, we have indeed the number one skill, which is Misery Swipe, followed by Anguish Swipe, and then followed by Manifest Toxin. And we're going to start with uh, Misery Swipe, which will swing your mace at your foe. You inflict Torment, and you can actually clear with three targets there, and the range is 130. Of course, then we next have Anguish Swipe, you can hear me clicking, um, which is uh, the extra torment as well, and a number of targets obviously free, because the mace is going to do that cleave. And then we've got the uh, Manifest Toxin, which deliver a cr crushing bow blow that sends toxic energy, chaining to enemies behind each target. So that's pretty nice, actually, going through targets there. And then inflicting that poison, of course, for three seconds. Um, number of bounces is three, and the number of targets is one. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I mean, you, I guess you focus the main target, and then it bounces between the three. But, you know, I, I actually need to check the footage on that. But um, you should be able to see that later in this video. We are going to move on now to the uh, Malix utilities. Okay, so we're just going to quickly listen to the changeover to the next legend, which is going to be the Malik's legend. So here we go, and it's going to be going over the heal and the utilities and the elite skill. Just going to be quiet while this happens, because it's cool. Oh yeah, that's so good. So the heal is going to be 
Um, basically, you heal yourself and you heal more for each condition which is currently on you, which is actually great. It's like it's like the consumed conditions, I guess, of um, the necromancer to a degree. So it's it's fairly similar. It does say it doesn't say it actually takes away the conditions, but it heals one k ish of each condition which is currently on you. So actually, when you are in trouble and you're being condi bursted. When you heal, you'll get a really nice injection of uh, HP. So if you're against a Necro, Condi Necro, something like that, Condi Warrior, and if in Condi Orientate, it's actually really nice to get into that Malix and make sure you heal using that skill. So we're going to go over to the utilities now. Next, we're going to go over to Pain Absorption, and this is a great utility. So you got resistance to your self and to nearby allies, and you absorb conditions from the allies. Um, you gain additional resistance per condition. So you want to use this in high condi um, pressure situations, maybe in doubt going for a down, uh, sorry, going for a res and whatnot. And also if you're against maybe uh, a warrior, condi warrior, condi necro, any one condition based as well, where you're getting kind of bursted by those conditions and you need to get out of there or you need to try and just resist them. And resistance is great for that because you do get self-resistance per condition. So that's one second. And resistance is actually about the... Um, so con conditions currently on you are very much ineffective and it also stacks in duration so every time you get that stack extra stack you're going to get some longer resistance so it's really good in that situation it's going to be a good supportive skill actually as well so we're going to roll on to the next so the next utility is going to be very useful indeed. Banish Enchantment will deal damage to your foe, remove boons from and apply confusion to that foe. And you apply a bonus confusion if you have equal or more conditions than the threshold applied to you. So a very, very nice skill indeed. So the damage uh, damage threshold is going to be free. And also the, bon the confusion is pretty nice. That's a big amount of confusion. Um, six second confusion on skill on skill use you do get that self vulnerability you remove two boons and uh, maximum number of targets is five and it's unblockable which is actually could be so bloody useful versus things like guardians warriors any boons that are coming up even engineers you know how they get those conditions converted to boons when they are upon them so it is a very nice utility indeed and uh, it's going to be good for removing things like you know stability if you want to make sure that people aren't going to be able to get the down and whatnot on your enemy players uh, on your sorry on your allies and you know generally it's going to be a great it's going to be a great utility for the revenant as well so we're going to move on to the next utility now so we are on to the final utility now unyielding anguish you leap towards the target area tormenting foes and creating a demonic field that displaces enemies apply bonus torment if you have equal or more conditions than the threshold applied to you so you get a self cripple um, as well as this the condition threshold is free so by that, I mean you, you inflict torment, free sex of torment on the initial uh, hit, and then also you get those free bonus torment uh, ticks according to the actual tooltip as well. And you displace the enemy, which means you actually, where the target area is, and if there's an enemy in it, then they will be removed um, and put towards the edge of that AoE, as I remember correctly. Um, that could be slightly wrong, not too sure, but it basically it displaces them, it moves them. So good, great for taking out people if you want to make get them out of position where they're doing a lot of damage. Also, if they're going for a down on one of your allies, you can move them out of the way unless they've got stability or something. But then you can actually rip that stability, as you know from the other utilities. So it's a great, you know, there could be a nice combination here for getting downs, for getting um, to getting reses as well. If someone's going for uh, a res on their team members as well, you can put that down and it can completely move them out in the situation and then you're going to be able to get it down yourself so it's useful for many situations i will of course in the future do more detailed videos this is footage now so it's all you know all could be changed in the future but it's pretty nice info for now so going on to the elite now which is called embrace the darkness you summon the power of the legendary demon to transform in transform into a powerful avatar you increase all attributes and copy conditions to nearby foes every few seconds so this again is going to be one of those abilities which you activate and then you deactivate and this mode at any time as long as you have the energy necessary to keep paying the upkeep cost of the skill so the energy on the left hand side we're next to where the 
legendary it where the legend is that you can see it is at currently a 50% it's just above the weapon skill bar and you need to make sure that that's you know you've got enough there so that you can keep using it if it runs out you come out of that elite so it is a toggle is really good is really nice um this you do have for self torment as well which is uh you have to remember you inflict some conditions on yourself with some of these abilities. Um, number of targets is five, of course. The duration of each condition copied is three, and the interval is three seconds every time that pulses. And the radius is 240, which is fairly standard. Um, so it is very nice indeed. And in this build I have, you can see there's also the resistance there, um, which is going to be useful for self-torment. So that is the utilities and the elite and the heal for Malik's form. So let's check out these stats for the Malik's form. So just to show you quickly, as you go into the Malik's form on the elites, you can actually see that the stats do change considerably. Um, not considerably, but enough to make it, you know, worth using if you're going to inflict a lot of damage. Actually, to be honest, and that's a really useful skill. I mean, you know, those conditions, tra the condition transfer as well is beautiful, you know. So you're doing extra damage, you're doing extra condition damage as well when you're in that. So you really want to use that when you've got some a nice amount of conditions on you. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lovely skill. We're going to go over the rest of the build. You can see above there is going to be the Rune of Strength, the Celestial Amulet, the Energy Sigil, and then the Doom Sigil. So we get putting poison on our targets. We're also putting we're going to build up some energy because we need to have that dodge still then strength rune is going to give us that might stacking which i need to actually increase the damage of the conditions and also the other abilities that i have um like the power and direct damage as well so i like the fact that uh well they really it gave us this build a variation of this build as we came in and i actually changed from the whole record because and um condition duration i don't want less condition duration because I actually want those conditions sometimes to stick on me so I can actually have a supply of them to send over to my enemies so I don't want to have less conditions I want to have more <laughs> which is funny but it's a really 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 great um, build I love it so much and you can see me going through the uh, traits at the moment as well and I will go through them now and just quickly explain what they do and what they mean but first I might just switch through the uh, through to the dwarf and then stick on the elite just because it's fun and quite cool to look at. And also the UI looks very awesome. Sorry, just a random little break. I'm just going to use the elite here to show you the animation. But there we go. We'll just get back into the traits now. And uh, yeah, check these out, guys. Looking good. Okay, very quickly because I don't want to spend too much time on this. But we have next the sigil. We absolutely have the rune and then the amulet, of course. Uh, sigil is going to be energy. We want to increase that dodge regen, of course. The sigil of doom to inflict that poison, and also then the rune of strength, which we know very well by now, which is going to give us that extra might stacking ability. And then celestial, which is the all rounder, the all rounder amulet, which is so popular at the moment with people. And um, basically, it's a great way to survive. And actually, that's why this well, this is why the uh, amulet was given to us, so we could survive and actually learn the class a little bit more which is why the build has got great sustain um, most celestial builds have great sustain that is pretty much part and parcel of the actual amulet itself and uh, we're going to go next onto the traits and then uh, we're going to be pretty much done so we are going to move straight onto the traits now uh, right guys what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just wisp over the traits very quickly and just show you exactly what the build's about because this all this stuff can change and at the time this is exactly what I ran with and kind of sub also most of them were supplied by arena net when we got a build I just tweaked some bits and pieces so things like stability on dodge a lot of survival skills in terms of getting resistance when you use a utility when you actually um, do some damage you might actually get healed by that damage you do when you get hit by a foe you might get some extra energy some protection when you get cc'd things like that protect skills that help you survive to learn to play the build but then I increased it by the DPS by actually adding that strength sigil of course and then some other stuff as well so that's going to be it for the traits and we'll move on 
Okay, so that run through of traits, I normally I'd go over them a bit more, but it's really more about the mace and the axe offhand. And it's getting quite late now in the video, and we're just going to go over a quick little combo, which I did mention earlier, which is very fun and very awesome. We're going to go through that now, guys. So you've got your mace, you've got your axe, you've got all your stuff ready, and here's, here's a very nice combo to pull off some nice damage, and I'll go through it as we actually do it. Okay, so here we go everyone. Are you ready? First of all, it will be the number five skill which will pull those golems into the middle. Then we're going to roll with the second skill which is going to put the fire field on the floor giving us might on the next ability which is going to give us the blast and we will get that might. And then we're going to roll through the, all of the enemies on the fourth skill which is actually going to be that shadow step through and that's going to be the end of that combo. And you did see a burning tick of 1000. Remember this is pre-beta which means anything can happen in the next. Who knows because I don't know when it's released. Of course this combo would be better in Malik's form, which I am currently in, but using the Elite as well would give some nice extra ticks. But you get the general gist, this has been the mace with the axe as an offhand. Thank you very much, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I've been Jebro, this has been The Revenant, see you later everyone.